I'll call tonight's meeting to order and uh, I have a thumbs up from the control tower that we have live streaming engaged. So the first item of business is 1.1. Is there any items of conflict of interest? I see nobody indicating any, so that'll be so recorded. A motion to adopt the agenda. Okay, Councillor Holm moves the adoption of the agenda. Any discussion? Call the question, all in favor? Okay, that's carried. And there's no minutes to adopt, so we'll go right to item 4.1. And uh, by law, 796R 1220. Does CEO Hastings have anything to say with regard to anything? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The only thing that we would add um, in the staff report that was circulated um, earlier today if council is going to give consideration to the third reading prior to that, it would be helpful for staff if a couple of detail points would be clarified, such as commencement date, expiration date. Uh, the reason, uh, there's reasons for, for two. The previous draft that was discussed yesterday, it was written to expire on December 31st. That's right in the middle of Christmas season. It may be more pragmatic for council to have the expiration date um, one day past the first council meeting in January. You can always commence a special meeting sooner to rescind it or you can extend it. If you leave it till December 31st, you know, it makes it perhaps a little bit tricky uh, depending on what's going on at that time of year. The other, the issue is commencement date. There's a few different ways you can do it. You can have commencement upon the approval of third reading if that's indeed what council chooses to do. Or you can actually set a date in the future that gives people notice of when it'll start so that they can prepare as business owners, for instance, to acquire the PPE that they need um, and a bit of a, a notice um, type scenario. So those are just two detailed questions that having some definitive clarity from council on would help prior to knowing what exactly third and final reading um, will be. Yeah. Any questions through the administration? Councillor Chapman? Your Worship, and I thank you so much, uh, Kaylin, for your, your comments with regard to commencement and expiration. expiration. Um, would, would we be able to get some indication from the business community as to what might be an appropriate start? start date because I think this will be affecting them more than anyone so if we were to use um, this coming Monday as as a start point for the whole community to get on board uh, you know pending this bylaw does pass tonight um, and second to that uh, the exp uh, expiry date um, which would be uh, I would I would certainly recommend that on or upon uh, the next council meeting of uh, January 11th would be a time in that council can review and and offer uh, an ex offer its position whether to uh, to uh, what's the word I'm looking for uh, rescind it or or let it uh, die I guess and. Um, or to extend it so that um, would I be able to also ask for an amendment to the bylaw tonight yeah you can ask for anything <laughs> I guess yeah it hasn't passed so okay so I, I think what I'd like to um, address are a couple of things one is that uh, being that we're we're part of the Lethbridge County numbers that I think that our bylaw might want to reflect that line that they use in their in their uh, in their bylaw with regards to cases below um, 
fifty as to uh, per hundred thousand. I think there's a line in there that talks about that. Uh, so they're using the uh, the one hundred thousand uh, population as their barometer for for their bylaw. And I'm just wondering if that's helpful or not helpful because what I heard today from the county uh, was that their po their own population is ten thousand, but if you include all the surrounding municipalities it's around 25,000 and so would that affect their bylaw or would it affect our bylaw um, the other thing I'd like to ask that council consider um, and I just forgot which oh it's here in the, is the uh, um <coughs> Uh, section 6-1-A, if we could amend it to the age of 10, that also reflects uh, the number that is used by Lethbridge County, MD of Tabor, and I believe Town of Tabor. Um, I did get a question regarding um, face coverings today and so the question came from a business owner who uh, um, wanted to know is if, if they're sitting alone in their office um, if they would if they would need to wear a mask or or if they would have or if they would be uh, not affected by the bylaw if they were alone in their office. I, I suggested to them that if there's two or more people in their office, they may want to consider wearing a, bylaw, uh, wearing a mask. So those three items um, I'd like to have consideration to. Go ahead. Mr. Mayor, uh, through to Councillor Chapman. Certainly, Council is able to make and propose amendments as part of the process of passing third reading. That's totally within council's discretion to debate amendments prior to determining what gets inserted on third and final reading. Your comment about having a number per capita um, as, as, a, as a way to determine whether the bylaw is in effect or not, that would require a fairly extensive amendment. There are other communities that have done that. There's a whole section that deals with the formula that they use to track the number of incidences which trigger whether the bylaw is in effect or not. Typically with those bylaws, the expiration date's quite a bit further into mm -hmm. the future. And then whether the bylaw is in effect or not goes up and down depending on how the, the caseload goes. This bylaw is designed to be more short term and then expire. My recommendation at this juncture is that council pick an expiration date, whatever that may be. Um, and if that gets approved, if council wants to reassess that bylaw Mm -hmm. upon the expiration date, then look at incorporating some type of an amendment of that nature at, at that stage. Mm -hmm. Given that this is, you know, maybe a six week uh, timeline for Intel Council um, gives it an extension. I don't know that you'd want to draft a bylaw uh, amendment of that nature on the spot here without having a bit more time to do that. Um, age is uh, one of the recommendations that uh, we asked for Council to weigh in on. Um, the age two mirrors the city of Lethbridge. You are correct. The age 10 is what's in some of the other communities, including the MD of Tabor. Um, having definitive clarity from council on what the age is going to be would be a helpful detail. And then your question, finally, about um, people in their offices. They, they wouldn't have to, under this bylaw or even the provincial guidelines, wear a mask simply because it's not um, an office space that you're working alone. It's not open to the public, that's what would be considered a, a private space. Okay. Wh where the distinction would be drawn is if they were to get up and leave that office to walk down a communal hallway or a foyer or a coffee room where there could be an expectation of other people, that's when the face covering, the need to wear a face mm -hmm. covering would come in mm -hmm. and that's how this has been mm -hmm. applied throughout the province and even municipalities but also the logic um, of the province. Appreciate that, thank you so much because I, I think this particular business wants to 
you know, followed the rules and have been very, very diligent and, and careful about ensuring that everybody is complying uh, accordingly. Um, and uh, I guess my, the reason for my first question was really because the um, um, Alberta uh, numbers are, are considered as Lethbridge County and so Coaldale's numbers are reflective of the Lethbridge County numbers. So it really kind of blurs it when it becomes, when, you know, and again, as I say to people is that, you know, Coaldale is now the third largest municipality on Highway 3, so there's some, I, I would hopefully would have seen s a little more separation in numbers, but they've felt not that way. So as regard, you did touch upon uh, expira expiration date, and you mentioned uh, an earlier date than what the staff report says, but you know, just a reminder that we don't have a council meeting. Our next council meeting, our first one in January is on the 18th of January. So, <coughs> well, I think that's what's reflected in the wording of the recommendation or the point bullet points we talk about. So, uh, is January 18th? That'd be uh, the first meeting in January for us. And yeah. would that? I guess I would like. You know, off obviously the rest of council should have input in this question whether this might be uh, a time to reflect on that uh, on that bylaw or um, you know if if it becomes ex if it expires on uh, January 2nd as per, uh, then you have like uh, 16 days before you, you, re you visit it so anyway that's my comments councillor home Thank you, Your Worship. Being the sponsor of the motion, I'm uh, more than happy to uh, amend the motion to have the effective date, December the 7th, 2020, and that uh, council, and that the expiry date would be January 19th, 2021, which would be the day after our next meeting. As for the age, I'm not sure whether 10 is the correct number. Uh, the only reason I'm saying that is I believe right now Palliser School Division has it that masks are not required in grade one, two, and three. If somebody can help me on that. Anybody got young kids that can help me with that? I believe they don't need masks for grade one, two, and three, which would basically be an eight-year-old. So to say you don't need a mask in the town of Coaldale, but you have to have it for Palace or school division, et cetera, et cetera. We've got two conflicting kind of bylaws in effect there. So just to be the same as the city of Lethbridge and others, I would leave it at two years old. But I, I know if I had a three-year-old and I tried to keep a mask on them as a grand, grandchild, I don't think that's going to work really well. So I'd be happy to amend that to age eight to reflect similar to what Palliser School Division is, but I believe 10 is too old. Okay, so go ahead, Councillor Simpson. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so I have a few questions. First of all, what happens if the province of Alberta comes out with their own mandate on mass and it's different than ours? So that's my first question. Will that be a superior legislation to the town bylaw so that it would take precedence to our bylaw? Yes, but what if the age is different? Let's say we set it at eight and they set it at 10. So does ours still cover? I'm just, there could be issues because it might not even follow. So what they were following at one point may change. And so even if they put a mass mandate, if ours is stricter in ways, people might get confused. So that's where I'm kind of wondering, does ours apps, will it be declared as obsolete if the government put a mass mandate on? That's a, that's a good question. The mayor is correct, though. The doctrine of paramountcy, higher levels of government, will supersede the authority of lower lower levels of government. 
the, the litmus test to des decide whether there is that doctrine enacted is wh whether there's a, is it inconsistent? Or can you actually be stricter but still consistent with the, the legislation of the higher level of government? So it's very context specific. It depends on exactly what their rule is, um, but they will supersede uh, a municipal bylaw. we're very fresh into their new protocols so we don't know in two weeks what they're going to do because we don't know what the numbers are going to be coming out of these new protocols if they're if they will get better or if they will get worse so we don't know what the numbers will be and so until then it's kind of we don't know if they're going to come back and say kids at eight have to wear a mask and if we have ours at two then you know i'm just worried about the confusion um also as uh councillor chapman has mentioned i I too was approached by several businesses yesterday and several today. Um, one said uh, I was free to share their story, just don't put a name to it and a business name to it. So their biggest concern, and I heard this from everyone, every business that I talked to today, not their biggest concern is that this is going to fall on their backs. So they're already putting all the PPE in, they've had to lay off people. They've changed their work hours, so they're not even close to even making enough money to get get through it. And then they had their closed down sessions. So it's, it's very hard for these businesses to be able to put in all these extra protocols and have to have less hours so that they can follow them all. So they're struggling with this and they go, how are we gonna do this? Like, first of all, are we gonna have to, if somebody comes in, oh, I forgot my mask, now, do we have to provide them a mask? I guess that's up to the business to decide, but that's another expense for the business. Um, they said, do we have to be the bodyguards at the door, like the bouncers? How are we gonna decide, you know, I, if I came in and I have a medical condition and I'm not wearing a mask, by our rights, we can just say we have a medical condition, I'm free. So it's a lot of trust into people. So what are we gonna do if this goes into effect? how are we going to support those businesses through this all? Because especially with no enforcement or nothing like that, there's absolutely no support for businesses. And this is riding completely on their backs. And it's several businesses that have spoken to me about this in the last two days. So I truly worry about those that maybe are just hanging on or are struggling to keep the doors open and struggling to keep their employees employed. Are they going to be able to continue? Well, you know, my uh, interpretation of what, what we're trying to do here is like some people are positioned in like a draconian anti-constitutional maneuver on behalf of town council. And, you know, my intent on, you know, th this bylaw was a, more or less a strong, strong endorsement of the citizens' responsibility to wear masks and nothing more, nothing less. Just, you know, that, you know, and if you could call it something other than a bylaw, you know, that would be, you know, the, you know, the thing, right? You know, I don't, I think wording it as a, you know, the mandatory mask bylaw is a bit of a misnomer the way I interpret what, what our intention is, is because we're recognizing that, you know, enforcement is, you know, a very big issue that we don't want to download that onto businesses or, you know, some uh, helpless uh, worker at a small business and, and have them be our enforcement officer and all that, but, you know, merely a, a very, very strong endorsement that you know, we highly recommend that people, you know, look after one another by wearing masks and that. And, uh, and you know, I think, you know, I, I've heard the, you know, a lot of emails today and the one, you know, the thing that really irritates me and it's my own problem is when they say we don't, you know, please listen to the citizens. Well, most citizens don't realize that we have a, a throng of citizens contacting us with a myriad of different perspectives on this, you know, and, and you know, it's hard to respect, you know, necessarily identify that, you know, citizen A is against it for these reasons, but citizen B is all for it for these reasons. And then, you know, are we listening to A or B? I think what I, 
my uh, overall feeling about what we're doing is we're trying to listen to them all. I, I, I look at this as a compromise to, to do a really strong message to people and not to be draconian and not to, you know, be big brother and, and you know, like I don't, you know, I think a nice uh, poster on the, each business that could be provided by the town. We, town of Coldale strongly recommends the wearing of face masks, social distancing, hand washing, all these uh, proper public health protocols and that's that kind of thing. And, you know, especially in the era of higher numbers, you know, like this is, uh, you know, the numbers aren't going down and, you know, you can have, you know, you have a pool of people that, you know, blame the fact that, you know, face masks are making the numbers go up or, you know, and some, you know, say if, if you have more face masks, they'd be going down. And I mean, it's, no, I don't think there's anybody that really knows for sure. The only thing I know for sure is COVID-19 is out there. And, you know, if, if they, if some brilliant person had the magic bullet to cure COVID-19 tomorrow or to stop it, then please, uh, you know, enlighten us so we can, you know, you know, because I don't really, you know, they, uh, the one thing that I stand by in the fact that what was said in some of the emails today, this isn't really a municipal area, but, you know, failing other direction, you know, some of us around the table want to try and instill that sense of responsibility. But, so I, I, to answer your question, I would say, you know, I don't want to download it on the businesses and, you know, they're not to be engaging the people and, and you know, uh, unless that business has a strong, if they take it on themselves that they want to have a, have, have a strong mass policy to protect their clients and their uh, workers, then then I guess they can do that and that would be their own kind of a thing. So, but Councillor Avery and uh, then Councillor Lloyd. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so just to, uh, you know, thank everybody that has contacted us and we have had several, um, pros for and pros against, uh, face masks. It's a difficult decision for council to make, but we also want to respect everybody's safety. I believe Councillor Holmes mentioned last night about seat belts. So it's your choice if you want to wear a seat belt. Uh, if you want to drive impaired, that's your choice. If you want to wear a mask. That's your choice. I choose to wear a seat belt because I know that it'll protect me. I choose to wear a face mask because I know it will protect you because I respect the people I'm around. If I'm in a store, you can't always have your six feet. If you're going down an aisle, you're sometimes one or two feet. So I'm gonna reduce the risk for the people that I serve. So that's the way I look at it. I'm respecting you to wear my mask. So all I'm asking is if you want to wear a seatbelt or you don't want to wear a seatbelt, you want to wear a mask, you don't want to wear a mask. That's your choice. It's freedom of choice. But what we're doing is with our education campaign, we need to put in a bylaw in order to enforce an education campaign. And it, as you said, unfortunately, it's a bylaw. It's not just an education campaign because we need to put a little bit more substance behind what we need to do as municipal municipal governance and uh, again i speak very very in favor of putting in a face mask bylaw uh, I, I i read all the data both ways uh, it's my job to know the data because i'm in the healthcare profession and uh, you know i i choose to wear a mask uh, when i'm outside of my home, that's my choice, because I want to protect my neighbor, I want to protect the other people in the stores. And then just uh, one more thing, it is, I quickly looked up, uh, uh, kindergarten to grade three is uh, optional for Palliser School Division, so you're correct, grade four and up have to wear masks. Circumstances where physical distancing is not required. 
That was good, too. Are, are you done, or? Well, you, you got, is your? I, I saw your light come on. Did you just try to write on it? I wonder if you're bad at try. Yeah. 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 No, is your minute of the fame you can use the mic time as you like? socially and uh, medically and we really instigated a 25 percent uh, capacity in the stores which I think will really help with the uh, uh, social distancing so I think we're pretty well looked after I don't think we need to add to that at all Thank you. Councilman Chapman. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship, and uh, members of council. I, I, again, I want to echo everyone else's uh, comments with rega regards to uh, the, the communication that our community has shown to each one of us uh, um, for and against, uh, and uh, the emails and the texts and the phone calls that have come my way as well. And I just want to thank all those who have who've expressed their, their interest in this matter and have uh, expressed their, their position very, very carefully and, uh, and loudly with me. Um, to this, that really, the, at the end of the day, what re regardless of what happens tonight, it is our responsibility uh, to support uh, the dis any decision that is made either way, but also that the Chief Medical Officer of Health and their directions are really, really uh, important. Um, I want to applaud the, the Chamber of Commerce particularly because they've shown due diligence with respect to their membership and how they address this matter in their own way. And of course, each business has taken their, uh, their work and their effort really responsibly and um, because they know that there is uh, repercussions uh, if there is if compliance isn't not met. Um, our our businesses, our banks, our churches, our hair salons, all have been following uh, the clear protocols set out by the, by the chief medical officer of health. I can't go get a haircut without wearing a mask. Bottom, full stop. Uh, today I talked with a few key individuals who continue to express their support for for me as well as for council. They know uh, and have told me very, very clearly that this is really not a win, this is not a win-win situation. They understand that there's people for and there's also people against. However, whatever is decided tonight and however we vote that uh, they will continue to su support um, our work on council here in Coaldale. And with that, I'm really, really grateful for those people who have stepped out and said that, Bill, um, we support you and we are with you all the way. Um, I think I'll just close by this, and that is, is that uh, my wife and I will ma have made it very clear uh, between ourselves that w we will support whatever decision is made tonight. Uh, just before I recognize Council Murray, I just want to uh, draw attention to one thing. Like in the body of the bylaw, it says the purpose of this temporary bylaw is to encourage the wearing of masks. So then, would it make the bylaw? Uh, again, I don't like the word bylaw in this, but you know, when it, in the top part where it says, you know, a bylaw of the town of Coldale to impose temporary regulations, instead of saying requiring the wearing, how about endorsing? Could 
with endorsing me. I think that reinforces the nature of what we're trying to do by removing that word requiring to endorsing because you know either either we have you know in my mind we're in a contradiction here because you know the title of the bylaw is <laughs> the purpose of the bylaw is that so I think we're not in alignment by you know either we should have requiring in both instances or we should have endorsing in both instances in my in my mind but you know I I left my law license at home, so I, I could stand to be corrected. Councilor Avery? And uh, I appreciate your words. And uh, at this point, uh, I would like to uh, support a safe and healthy community. And I would like to make a motion for third and final reading of uh, masking bylaw 796-R-12-20. We uh, went through several amendments or changes, so can we, would you, uh, since you're sponsoring this, uh, could you just uh, list all the amendments that you're comfortable with in the sponsoring the third reading? The, uh, the wording that you had presented and then uh, the wording of uh, the age of uh, eight. Okay, so I'll just go down it. The commencement date, December 7th? Yes, yes sir. When, and then uh, the expiration date of uh, January 19, 2021. Yes, sir. And the age to reflect is eight, is that? And the, the change in the uh, title of the bylaw to endorsing uh, and striking and requiring. Uh, so that's your motion? Yes, sir. Okay, any discussion to Councilor Abrey's motion? Councilor Holm? By changing the wording, to endorsing, why are we wasting our time with any bylaw whatsoever? The reason we're having a bylaw here, we're having this discussion, I believe, is to require masking worn with all weather. So is that I'm protecting you, and you are protecting me. We are not doing this just so that we can rubber stamp something and make ourselves feel a really good that we actually passed a non-effective zero bylaw. So why would we do this? I believe the wording is correct. Require the wearing of face masks. That's why we have a bylaw. That's why they have a bylaw for 70, whatever it is, 78% of the population of Alberta, our chief medical officer, Passed that, had the Premier of Alberta pass that bylaw for almost 80% of the population of Alberta must require to wear a mask. That includes Edmonton, that includes Calgary, and their surrounding communities, which makes up the massive portion of Alberta. So if it's good enough for 80% of the Alberta to require them to wear a mask, why is it not good enough for the town of Coaldale to pass a bylaw to require a mask? I believe changing the wording is just wrong. Well, I would just, I would just say that the, you know, the bylaw that is intended in my mind is, you know, the, the one that launches a stronger uh, public message that we're, you know, we're supportive of fa face mask wearing. Uh, and like, if, if we're gonna go, but you know, like if we're gonna go down that way, then what you're saying then Councilor Holm would also would require that we would have to have uh, fines and penalties and uh, enforcement to make it a real bylaw. I mean, you know, to me, you know, to call a spade a spade, I, I would think that you know, in the essence, you know, like all of our other bylaws in town are also uh, bat underpinned by, you know, uh, penalties and, and uh, you know, enforcement. And, you know, the way I, you know, the way I was positioned, you know, my support of option number two was, you know, to launch into a very strong uh, public awareness, you know, 
this is a, a good endorsement of council to support this. And you know, the bylaw is there, you know, and if uh, in the intervening days that comes between now, you know, December 7th and January 19th, and we, you know, it's found that, you know, oh, okay, we were, you know, we do need more teeth to the bylaw, uh, then, you know, then we, you could, you know, there, by all means, you can amend the bylaw. My great hope is that by January 19th, we can just let it uh, expire and, and not worry about it, I think, that we ramped up the public uh, program and, and education to the level that you know we have good strong compliance and that you know and then uh, you know move on to other more exciting uh, matters before council so, so. councillor simpson thank you worship so i have a few questions about the wording then so the top part would say a bylaw of the town of coldell to endorse temporary regulations requiring see so the requiring is once again that's making it's so whatever it's, it says requiring would be endorsing or but or so then it would be to endorse temporary regulations endorsing the wearing of masks and other face coverings and then um, the purpose is to encourage the wearing of face coverings blah 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 and then number five is it is mandatory that a person wear a so I think we would have to go through this and reword a few of them if unless I'm confused and we're yeah, wanting to do something that else would here. Be my intent, but Councilor Avery? Uh, I would not uh, support any of that changing because endorse requiring in my mind is the same thing. We're approving the wearing of face masks and then when you go to five, it's mandatory to wear it in public space. So we want them to wear it in public space. So endorse, require, to me, same thing. We're approving it and then the bylaw lays it out what we're approving or endorsing. So I, I would not want any of the other wording changed because if we start taking out, uh, it's mandatory that a person wear a face covering, well, we may as well just, it's mandatory to just, we're done. Because the number five is where all the meat is. And I just I th that's very this. so then I would probably take the endorse out because endorse is to declare one's public approval or support of doesn't mean you have to right so then I would almost not use the word endorse it, to me it just to me it's like two different things face mask uh, or we're requiring them so either way it's just a mix of words um, but if we start getting into the the purpose of the bylaw uh, we may as well just stop debating now and not pass third reading and get on with our evening Be because it's just that there, there if, the, if the purpose is changed the intent of the bylaw is gone so there's no point in debating any further, do we need a face, uh, a mask bylaw? See, so you're, you're, you're just uh, changing the one word up. So. That was correct. We require to endorse. And then we were changing the implementation, implementation date, the expiration date, and the age. CAO Hastings. Mr. Mayor, I just want to make one general comment about the intent of the bylaw. The intent is not to enforce or to have um, businesses enforce the bylaw on our behalf. We're not asking for business owners to be the police officers in this case that um, are in charge of um, submitting to us evidence of people who come into their store to accost them with the rules of the bylaw. Um, they don't have the authority to do that, nor is that the intent of having a bylaw like this um, should council wish to approve it. So I just wanted to make sure that it, it was clear that there isn't this expectation that we're delegating the authority to business owners to get into the policing business. The ultimate authority that business owners have is within the jurisdiction of being a store owner. 
if they want to exercise the choice to ask somebody to leave their store because they don't have a face mask on that's within their purview and that's a choice that they as a business owner get to make but we're not asking them to take the bylaw and enforce it on our behalf just so it's clear in terms of what the expectation is for um, for business owners their choice resides in being a business owner and controlling the operations of their business and who they wish to serve Councillor Simpson. Thank you, Your Worship. So, why put a bylaw in place? I, ju I just, you know, the, there are businesses that in Coldell ha that have considered put implementing the masks, yes or no, into their workplace and with their customers. So, why don't we? So, we're saying we're going to make this bylaw in effect, but then there's no way of implementing it and the businesses don't have to do anything about it but yet they i think they're going to feel like they have to and i'm going to guarantee you're going to get some feisty people i probably today personally have got through facebook and my own per, my own email like so not including any stuff we've contacted today on for all of us for all of council i've had three that are in favor of the mass bylaw i've had probably about 40 that are not and they're wondering how this is going to happen, how this isn't going to cause fight. So I'm just saying, if we say you can choose to enforce this bylaw, where all we're doing is making the two people that come into that store that can have different opinions, there's going to be a fight. And it's up to the business owner then to settle that fight somehow. And I just, I kind of have to agree with Roger's point, with Councillor Holmes' point, either make the bylaw or you don't because there's just, there's no, we can't, we can't. Like, I, I just don't see how a business is going to be able to operate properly. People are going to be able to go in wearing masks or no masks, and there's going to be no conflict. Your lights on, Councillor Avery. Yes, thank you, Worship. So we were concerned about our, our, our uh, masking bylaw, but we, we mentioned the 25% capacity given occupancy by our, our local fire department. Who's enforcing, who's enforcing that? think it's a local business again it's their their uh, duty as the local business owner uh, if they're allowed 25 people in and 27 come in are they going to ask two to leave or are they just going to manage their business to make sure that there's no altercation because they're over that 25 percent by two so we we bring in what the province is doing and saying, well, that's the right thing to do. And the business owners have to monitor that and, and uh, police that themselves. And we're all all right with that. But as soon as we want to do something for a health and safety, safe community, we say, well, it's not fair to our business owners, but we'll let the province put in rules and say, yes, that's all right. So I, I'm just, I'm confused why we're okay with this, but we're not okay with this. They can enforce what the province is saying at 25%, but we don't want them doing anything with the masking bylaw. Again, I had a lot of people the other way saying, thank you for voicing because I will not shop in Coldale if there is no masking bylaw. So I, I because last night I spoke in favor of the bylaw, I had those that are saying, yes, keep speaking in favor of a masking bylaw. So. I, I guess it, they're going to go to those that uh, they feel will listen to them. Thank you, Your Worship. I was going to kind of follow up and say the same thing. I would suggest that the, the high majority of people that directly contacted me today thanked me for the support of this mass bylaw last night. So, again, Who's going to talk to you? Probably those who are like-minded. That's not a big surprise, Councillor Simpson. Also, when I when I look at the city of Lethbridge, when I look at the city of Calgary, the city of Lethbridge had a mass bylaw in for two months now. I don't see reports every day of businesses running to the media, running to social media, saying, "I'm going to be shut down. To I'm going to shut down tomorrow because." I have to police this myself. City of Lethbridge doesn't run around ticketing people. They haven't written a ticket yet for not having a mass bylaw or, or contravening the mass bylaw. So 
to make it mandatory doesn't mean that the business is going to go out of, out of business. They're just going to do what the province has been telling them all along. Manage the situation. We'll keep you open if you manage the situation. We got the other choice. We can just leave it wide open. And the next one will be you're shut down. We won't allow you to manage it anymore. We will just shut you down. And I don't want this province to have that opportunity. Councillor Chapman, you. Uh, a comment, Your Worship. Um, uh, enforcement will really be a, a partial issue here. Uh, I know, just as an example, business uh, uh, owner explained to me that uh, really, if there's going to be teeth in this bylaw, that the ability for that business um, owner to have more enforcement on their employees uh, who don't seem to uh, feel this is really a, a, a serious matter. And so I think what they would like as, as an employer that, that there might be able to be some form of uh, a, uh, in, whether enforcement or education so that the, the employees would, would realize that, uh, that they have to be wearing face masks. Okay, Councillor Simpson. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I believe there is um, um, things with the provincial government that if you do not follow the rules, there's enforcements of it, there's fines and penalties. So does that make them think twice about allowing two extra people in? I would think so. Um, this has no enforcement, nothing. So that makes it even harder on them. Um, as for Lethbridge, I have been in several stores that have had to hire security guards and I've had several people telling me they've had to hire security guards because of the mass bylaw. So that's one extra staff member there for the protection of their employees because of a mask bylaw that cannot be enforced even by their standards. Even though there's fines, it's very hard to enforce. I get, you know, like, the, now I'm really in a quandary because, you know, this is, you know, tonight's discussion's been, you know, very helpful in a lot of ways, but it's kind of given me one step forward and two steps back because what I'm hearing and what I'm feeling is a lot of, I'm not sure if this is a well-intentioned uh, situation that we got going, you know, like, you know, my intention was to, you know, have a strong endorsement, you know, uh, public awareness and, and, you know, people, you know, having, you know, good compliance and having respect, respect for one another both ways, uh, respecting people that do wear face masks and respecting people that don't. And, uh, you know, not, you know, it, it almost sickens me to see on the TV that you, you watch a, a fellow going into a store and, you know, they're, because they're not wearing a mask or they are wearing a mask, they're, they're, you know, they're being treated differently and whatnot. So it, and, you know, so right now, uh, you know, I would probably be voting against the, the bylaw in a sense because, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting confused at, you know, at things and now I, you know, I, I get the sense, I can't help but think that the, the community overall will be confused by what we are gonna be putting before them. Because we got a, a thing called a bylaw and it's, you know, my, you know, and it's really not for, a, you know, a lot of intention, you know, it, it, it doesn't have, you know, it, you know, so it, myself, I'm, I'm not, you know, I just feel uneasy about you know, the way it is right now, that's for sure. But, uh, Councillor Simpson and Councillor Holm. I thank you, Your Worship. I agree with you. I'm definitely for an endorsement, but I'm not for a bylaw just because of the enforcement act actions of it. And I do not want to have our, our shops have to hire security guards. And I do I I do want the safety of our residents and to I think all of us do, and that's our number one priority sitting around here. What's the best thing for them? Um, an endorsement campaign, absolutely. I, I would be 100% in favor of it. 
a bylaw, I, I'm like this, I'm not in favor of. Anybody doesn't know about masks, about protocols around COVID, et cetera, et cetera, then they've lived under a rock for the last eight months. I believe we have gone as far as we need to go about patting people on the back, telling them to have a good day and please social distance, please do this, please do that. It is time that we start protecting every citizen in Coaldale. That means we have to have a mask bylaw because I don't want this carrying on forever and ever. So we have a motion in front of us right now. Let's vote on it. And if people want to vote to who cares about the citizens of Coaldale, please vote against it. All right, well, I think I wouldn't be so uh, black and white in, in that, you know, that's your interpretation. And, and, you know, I think everybody that has been on council for the number of months that this uh, term has been, has always had the best interests of the citizens of Coaldale and that. So it's, uh, you know, I don't think it draws down to that, but that's my opinion. And thank you for expressing yours that way. Uh, Unless there's any more discussion, I'll call the question. All in favor? Okay, and opposed? And so, you didn't vote. Do you vote? Okay. So I was wanting to actually do the, I was gonna ask one question. And so uh, we'll we'll call we, can, we can forget about the, the but let's start the, the vote again, okay? okay? Because I put my hand up when I didn't want to. Okay. Not, not in the vote, All I right. wanted to had a question. Okay, so is there any questions? Not no more. No question. Okay, so. There, Seeing that there are no further questions, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Okay. And opposed? Okay. All right. That's okay. oh, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Thank you, Worship. Could I uh, ask if it is possible for administration to check into Zoom meetings in case a person would like to stay home in the protection of their own home instead of coming out into non-masked areas to attend meetings. Thank you. The administration can look into that. Councilor Avery. And, and I support that because uh, going forward for the next uh, 21 days, I, I wanna zoom into a meeting. I will not be sitting at this table, but I still want my voice to be heard at council meetings. And so we need to find another mechanism to provide council meetings because um, I'm not going to sit around in a room that those that don't respect me and want to protect me, well, I'll protect them. So, again, I support what Council Holm is saying. Thank you. And uh, motion to adjourn? Oh. oh, what? Oh, I thought it was a, I think that's just a practical uh, Councilor Holm moves the, the administration uh, look into uh, how best to uh, facilitate future meetings uh, via Zoom for the till what time? That you, you were saying 21 days or something like that? Or, or do you have a time frame? I'm not going to attend any meetings if people aren't going to inspect it either. Okay. Well, uh, Councilor Holm has a motion to direct the administration to investigate how to do meetings via Zoom for people that don't want to attend in person. Yeah. All in favor? Okay. Opposed? Okay. We, uh, Councilor Lloyd and Paul were opposed. That uh, your worship um, had administration not re um, um, researched that uh, possibility or that uh, technology when we first started uh, with Zoom Zoom meetings. Go ahead. 
through the chair to Councillor Chapman. Yes, that's correct. That's why I turned my light on. We do have the, the capability, so what we'll do, um, we'll amend the procedure and on a meeting by meeting basis, if we could just learn from which councillors would prefer to attend the meeting um, um, through uh, another means, then we can set that up. It is important, however, though, that we have a few days lead time so that we can properly ensure that the meeting is set up for those individuals who are not attending in person, but we can easily accommodate it. The one thing I'm gonna check in with our um, IT staff as well as um, Lana, our legislative coordinator, is what's the best platform to do that? Because we wanna make sure that whatever technology is used to help somebody attend virtually syncs properly with our live streaming. So it's doable. Um, the, app, the actual technology is something that I'll have to get back to you on. The only thing I'll need to know um, from council is who wishes to attend virtually um, in advance. Just further to that, Kaylin, if uh, you could uh, find out as well uh, the protocol for in-camera uh, portions of the council meeting, whether you can continue with uh, um, a, a Zoom call. Under normal circumstances, uh, councillors are not permitted to attend closed session portions of the meeting by virtual means. That restriction in the Municipal Government Act has been temporarily suspended as a result of COVID because some councils are having entire council meetings through virtual means. The procedure though has changed where, it depends on the council, but there, there is a, um, an ability for a council or to, to attend the closed session portion of the meeting. There's a range of different ways that municipalities have gone about policing that because you can't always guarantee who can hear, who's in the room. That's why it's not permitted under normal circumstances. So some municipalities that we've checked with, they allow it, but they also have the councillor sign and swear an affidavit that they were the only one present during that portion of the meeting. So we have to um, come up with the equivalent Coldell procedure on how to govern that, but it is possible and that'll be something that'll be addressed in the upcoming procedural bylaw. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. So I'll just give you the heads up right now, uh, Kaylin, that I will be virtual until the curve starts to flatten. So if it's January, it's January. If it's March, it's March. But again, um, out of respect for myself and my family, that's what I am going to choose to do. Okay, anything, Councillor Lloyd? Okay, Councillor Lloyd moves the adjournment. All in favor? Aye.